Cold Snap by Eileen Spinelli. It was a snowy cold in Toby Mills. Ears tingled, cheeks were frosty pink, toes too numb to wiggle. An icicle dangled from the nose of the statue of General Toby, the town's founder. After school, Millie Moffat made snow angels. Her little brother, Chip, threw snowballs, splat, at the general's hat. Frankie Tornetta whooshed down T-Bone Hill, whoop, right into Styx Hartman's snowman. Millie twirled Chip round and round until they both toppled into a snowbank. By nightfall, the kids of Toby Mills were dragging and wet and shivering, and so they trooped home, boots crunching on snowy streets, ready for hot chocolate and flannel pajamas. On Saturday, the icicle on General Toby's nose reached down to the dimple on his chin. Ice glazed alleyways. Spoken words became puffballs in the frigid air. Page one of the Toby Mills Crier read, Cold Snap! The Sullivan sisters served steamy soup and bubbling stew at the Sullivan Diner. In between customers, they knitted mittens as big as flapjacks for all the kids in Toby Mills. Mrs. Moffat, the church soloist, gargled with salt water every hour to avoid getting a sore throat. On Sunday, General Toby's icicle hung past his chin. The Moffats and the Sullivan sisters slogged through the slush to church. Mrs. Moffat sipped lemony tea from a thermos before her solo. Millie and Chip huddled, cuddled close to Elijah the church cap. Pastor Pickthorn, teeth chattering, preached in earmuffs and overcoat. The Sullivan sisters wore long underwear under their dresses. Monday was even colder, and the general's icicle was growing. Frankie Tornetta pulled Miss Dove, the teacher, across the frozen parking lot on his sled. Styx Hartman, slipping and sliding, carried her books. The mayor's office fielded complaints about the weather. Street workers made fires and metal drums. Mr. Moffat was stuck on a city train for two hours after the doors froze shut. He and the other passengers had to be rescued through windows by firefighters. Tuesday was colder still. General Toby's icicle touched the metal on his chest. Pastor Pickthorn's furnace had gone out during the night. When he stepped from his bed on Tuesday morning, his bare feet nearly froze to the floor. His dog, Muggs, begged for his fuzzy red coat, the one he had balked at wearing before. The Sullivan sisters knotted a sweater for Elijah. Millie Moffat tossed sunflower seeds to the birds, who were braving the winter. On Wednesday, the temperatures plunged even lower, and so did General Toby's icicle. A bitter wind nipped at noses, tipped trash cans, flipped Chip off the creaky schoolyard swing. Frankie Tornetta stopped whining about his itchy woolen socks and put on three pairs. The Toby Mills Movie Theater had a problem with its furnace. Tickets were now half price and bring your own blanket. There were more complaints to the mayor, who stayed overtime at City Hall. His wife brought him toasty pink bunny slippers and his warm blue bathrobe, which he wore over his suit. Mrs. Moffat didn't have to coax Chip to take a warm bath. 
At bedtime, Millie Moffat tucked her cold feet into her flap jacky mittens. By 8 a.m. on Thursday morning, the official thermometer outside City Hall fell to a number it never met before. Zero. If the people hadn't been so cold, they might have cheered. General Toby's icicle reached his belly button. Mr. Moffat danced a jig to keep warm till his train arrived. Miss Dove brought shells and a beach chair and a plastic seagull to class. Imagine it's summer, she told their students. Pastor Pickthorn taped two hot water bottles onto his feet for his afternoon nap. Mrs. Moffat discovered a nest of mice in her oven. She didn't have the heart to chase the little critters into the terrible chill. So she baked her husband's birthday cake at the Sullivan Diner. By Friday, out-of-towners were calling Toby Mills the New North Pole. The tip of General Toby's fat icicle kissed the ground. Something must be done, declared the mayor. I have an idea, said the mayor's wife, and she did. All day long, the mayor's staff delivered flyers. Winter surprise, T-Bone Hill, 7 p.m., everybody welcome. Winter surprise, groaned Miss Dove. I was planning to cuddle in bed with a book. Winter surprise, snorted Mr. Moffat. I have a surprise for the mayor. By 7 p.m., we'll all be popsicles. Now, now, said Mrs. Moffat. We ought to go. It's our civic duty. And so they went, the citizens of Toby Mills, to T-Bone Hill. The sky was dark and clear. The moon was silver asleep. But look, there, on the hilltop. A soaring, roaring bonfire. Sparks flew into the night like newborn stars, but most happily of all was something that Toby Mills had missed for a week. Heat, warm, old-fashioned, where have you been, heat. The mayor ladled cups of hot cider from steaming pots. The mayor staff served donuts. Sticks Hartman played a lively tune on his kazoo. Mrs. Moffat sang, and so did Muggs and Elijah. Mr. Moffat joined the Sullivan sisters in a dance. Pastor Pickthorn practiced Sunday sermon on the mayor's wife. Miss Dove demonstrated how to make sugar on snow candy. First, she sent Frankie Tornetta to a nearby snowbank with a big bowl and a spoon. Millie and Chip filled the bowl with clean snow. When they returned, Miss Dove drizzled hot maple syrup over the snow. It hardened into the best candy anyone at Toby Mills had ever tasted. Everyone had such a warm and cozy time that they forgot all about the cold snap. The next morning, when they woke up, the sun was bright and the snow was melting, and the icicle on General Toby's nose had shattered at his feet. The thermometer outside City Hall read 15 degrees Fahrenheit, and was heading up. The end.